sun kisses this part of our land first when it rises over India. Tucked away in the far east of the country, sitting pretty between Nagaland, Mizoram and Assam and bordering Myanmar on the east with its distinctive identity and culture is the middle one of the Seven Sisters, Manipur. This was once a kingdom of the brave warriors that dates back to 50 BC. A land of ancient culture. A land of deep-rooted traditions. A land I'm honoured to be exploring. Someone said the world is a book and if you don't travel, you're only reading one page. And if journeys are made up of the people you meet along the way, surely there can be nothing better than meeting as many different communities and people as possible. And in Manipur, at literally every turn, there's a unique community with its own history and story. And that is what I'm going to do in this episode. Take as many turns as possible. And this turn is taking me northwards from the capital city of Imphal straight to the fourth largest of the nine districts of Manipur, Senapati. Never-ending bending roads, waving happy children, low-lying heavy clouds and a surprise at every corner. No thank you, I'm going to skip the kiss. Prince Charming will have to wait. Mild showers, however, aren't a surprise in the subtropical climate of the state. Everyone, from the ladybird to the dragonfly, from the village women to the little children, seem joyful despite the grey skies. My first stop on what's going to be a long journey was the village of Willong. You remember how I said there's something unique at every turn? These are the monoliths of the Maram tribe of Willong, set up here hundreds and thousands of years ago. I mean, who needs Stonehenge? These stones have living spirits inside them and are either male or female. And according to a popular urban legend, you can't count how many monoliths there actually are because they're all protected by a sacred spirit. Or can't you? One, two, three, four. F One, two, three, four. F you actually can't. They're so confusing. The sacred spirit protecting these stone erections that stand up 20 feet high, kissing the sky. Faith is a way of life for the Naga tribes in the north of Manipur. Every stone has a name. At night, you can hear them call out to each other and no man dares to come here after sundown. The Katak stone site, erected by their strong forefathers, gave me a glimpse into its historical proof. So this is to mark the height of the tallest man of the tribe. That is where his navel reached. And that... There are as many stories about the monoliths as there are monoliths. And I promise I'm not making this one up. This is to measure the height of someone before they get married. Until you are this tall, you can't get married. I measure myself. Oh, still a few inches to go. On that note, I bid farewell to these giant safekeepers of the Marams. With many questions still unanswered, I continue my journey further north and closer to that village in the distance. And there you go. That's Yankolen village of the Zalaingrong tribe. Would you look at the incline it's built on? It's literally vertical. And of course, it has its very own cool story. You have no idea what lengths distances and inclines I would go to for a good story. Yankalin 
is home to approximately 600 families which include over 4000 people most of them tribals and what is their story ye gaon bana hua bahut saal ho raha hai hum bhi ganti karna nahi sakta hai ye jelang rao hai tribe jo hai jelang rao we have three brothers the first one is the rao mai second one is liang mai and we are belong to jemai communities let me break it up for you ze comes from zeme or dwellers of the warmer region liang mai is men of the north rong mai people settled in the south there you have it ze liang rong One of the many tribes that have filled life in these hills with their song, dance, and ancient traditions, which they not only keep alive despite the 21st century globalization, but fiercely protect and revere. This is the end of the road to Yonkalin, but we're not there yet. The rest of the journey is a steep walk up. Come on. Yonkalin village is one of the oldest villages as regarded by the Jelaron people, and this village is a very historic village. Our village has got unique talent. We build a house in such a way that even the rain and strong winds came, it resists. गाँव का करीब करीब तीन सौ अस्सी नब्बे रहेगा नियरली चार सौ पॉपुलेशन तो फोर थाउजेंड समथिंग है सब बच्चा से लेके बुरा था ये गाँव उन फादर कहते हैं गाँव का लाले कर रहा पड़ा इसलिए हम लोग अपना डिफेंस के लिए ऐसे गाँव बना के रखा है तो इन दोस्त इस और फोर फादर दे वर हेड हंटर्स सो व्हेन दे लुक अराउंड दे that this village must be the safest place. The village is surrounded by four rocky mountains. Why does man I got to apna hatiar satir pakar ke spare pakar ke sab tarap gate ka tarap se hum log rok ke apna dushman ko hatane ke liye hum log ye defense ke liye hum gaon banaya hua. While the enemies were kept at bay by these gates, friends like me are always welcome, especially if you have travelled a long, long distance. I never thought I'd say this, but that drive was totally worth it. Believe me, eight hours on the road and a few flights of stairs feels like nothing when it leads to this. take only a moment to breathe this village without electricity will soon get dark and before i lose light i better be on my way well that experience was unforgettable and unmissable you have to come here and now it's time for me to make another turn sun is a reminder that i'm in the east if it rises here first it also goes to bed by 5 pm the hearth is warm and the dog asleep the further i go from imphal the sky gets a little darker and the journey a little longer 
but it's the temptation of a warm kitchen fire that keeps me going closer to my night's halt. Purul, at last. Wow, time really flies in these hills. So if you're planning a trip up here, make sure to give yourselves a good three to four hours. Luckily for me, I have a wonderful family waiting for me and dinner is on the table. Chop, chop. Dinner will have to wait. Making time for pleasantries for my hosts in this homestay is the least that I can do. Okay. And not long after, the eldest son of the family, Robert, welcomed me. Welcome, welcome. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank welcome. You. You, you speak English? A uh, little bit, little, little bit, bit. Uh, okay. little bit of English. Okay. Uh. Can you please say to them thank you for uh, having me? And it's so late. <laughs> And just like that, with some chitter chatter and introductions, the night already seems to get warmer. With my hosts, Bo meaning father and Pe meaning mother. And my trusty mode of communication, Robert. Thank you. Mm. Oh. Ah, yum. Mm. You must be feeling very cold. I so am. That, uh, <laughs> so that they are offering you the clothes. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh. We usually offer this shawl mm -hmm. to the guests. Only to the only guests. Only for guests? For the guests. Only for the guests. Very warm. It is traditionally made and it is waved by my mom. Wow. And is there a reason Pei's shawl is got is black and his shawl is white? Female dress, ah. I mean female ones are mostly with different colors. Acha. Whereas male, ah. one color. See, like my dad. One color. One color. You one color. One color. This is mushroom. Mm -hmm. And bamboo shoot and then uh, dry meat. So I've heard that Purul is one of the prettiest little villages in Manipur. So after dinner, I'm going straight to bed so I can be up bright and early because I'm going to work in a paddy field with Po. How exciting is that? And do lots of other things, right? Yes. Very busy. Yes. Great. So I'm going to finish dinner straight to bed. morning sunshine. A relentless alarm clock that wakes one and all. Sunlit fields. Gurgling river. Fires burning, the stew is on boil. Signs of rural life. And the whole family gathers to play, to love, to thaw. Slightly different from mornings at home, still feels so inclusive. Cucumber for breakfast? Now that's a first for me. First means different things in different situations. This is Renny. Renny means first, and so the firstborn daughter of the house has been named Renny. Isn't that beautiful? And with the first ray of the sun, the inhabitants of Purul get to work. Most of them Pomai Nagas. The men weave mats and the women trademark shawls of their tribe. Though a small village, Purul has a feather in its hat. This is the home of the indigenous game of Tutu. 
to an outsider, it appears something like a discus throw. But everything here has a time and place. So does Tutu, which is played during the New Year celebration, a reminder of new beginnings. Early morning village life. God, I wish I could wake up like this every day. So much going on and yet it's so peaceful, soulful and magical. Legend has it that the roots of the tribe originated when one of their forefathers thrust his walking stick on the ground at a meeting place in Makhel. And it is believed that this stick took root and sprouted into a large wild pear tree locally called Kyataubi. A standing example of that are these wooden homes. Buffalo heads carved out with bare hands and basic tools. An animal that in the Naga culture is revered. Homes earned, not bought. By throwing a feast for the entire village. By being good hosts. And today is an attempt for me to return the favor of my generous hosts. And the obvious choice of occupation for the Pumai people is agriculture. Today, I've set out to experience just that. So let's hear it from the sacred stone first. One for family, two for wealth and finally for health. Whichever pebble lands by the sacred stone, I'll be blessed with that. Done like a pro and off I go. It is not just culture that they have preserved. It is nature as much. With 66% of forest cover, 20% of Senapati's land is used for cultivation. Rice, maize, potato, cabbage and cereals being the major produce. And the hill people travel far and wide on foot every single day to tend to their lands and till their soil. Wow! These people work really hard. I'm only halfway there and I've been walking forever. It's harvest season. The land is golden. The grains ready to be separated from their ears and the women are hard at work. Wow, I'm finally here. And this sweet pa has been waiting a very long time. The Pumai are known for their bravery, their hospitality and their strength. And now I've seen an example of each one. Let's get started. I don't understand their language, but then hard work speaks no language. Getting the hang of this. And with my basket half full, I'm on my way following the leader of the team. Oh wait, what are these men doing? The paddy fields double up as fisheries and by trapping the fish within a cane basket, the menfolk can catch them with their bare hands. The fishing and farming techniques are labour-intensive but a sure-shot success for generations. <laughs> 